Um, you think is a plant or animal? So it's actually an animal. So it's oh. classified in the phylum of echinoderms, which is a no backbones animal. And actually, sea cucumber have a tube feet. Okay, they have tube feet under the body, uh, from range from hundred to thousand of tube feet under the air, where they able to move and also to attach on the surface. Okay, and they also can control the water pressure. So that's why they're allowed to move. Okay, so for sea cucumber, basically is a, very, is a very simple animal, as you can see. It's a very simple animal where they have the front, where they equip with the mouth. So the mouth is surrounding with about 10 to 30 modified tube feet, like, like a tentacle, like a hand to fit on. Okay, and they also have a stomach. They have a stomach in the middle here, where they have the other end, which is the butt, which is the bottom. Okay, so beside that, what else they have? Okay, what else they have? They have almost nothing. Okay, if you look carefully, I they have eyes. I they have eyes. There is no eyes for the sea cucumber. There's no eyes. They they don't really see well. Why they need to see well underwater? Okay, how about nose? Why they need nose? Yeah, of course, they have no nose. And brain. I they have brain. Okay, for sea cucumber, one, this is one of the brainless animals, but yet they're so clever. And how about blood? Are they have blood or no blood? And they have no blood either. Okay, and bones. How about bones? I could say they are very soft. So they don't consist any bones. So for sea cucumber, I could say it's a very, it's a very simple animal without anything. Just the front, the mouth, the stomach, and the butt. Okay, it's a very simple animal, but yet later you can see how um, benefit they are towards our health and also towards the uh, marine environment. Okay, can I look at the slide? <laughs> Harris. Okay. So now I'm going to talk about. <laughs> okay, next slide. Okay, this is basically how the sea cucumber look. As you can see, the front where they equip with the, all the tentacles to pick up all the uh, uh, sediment, which is their food. And they have a stomach and intestine where they also have leg of bone, which is, is not a bone slide at all. And they also equip with the respiratory tree is actually for the breeding. So for sea cucumber, it's very interesting because they do breathe through its butt. <laughs> they do breathe through its bottom. So the way how they breathe, basically they just pump, pumping the seawater through the uh, two respiratory system, the two respiratory tree that it got uh, and around, and then that's how they breathe because the seawater, we have a dissolved oxygen, okay? So basically that's how it breathes. And you can see there's a tube feet under where they're able to move around, okay? And the tube feet basically is like a small sucker where they can hold onto the rocks or onto substrate to move by uh, make, uh, control the water pressure inside their body. Okay, next please. Okay, up here you can see how the sea cucumber is really benefit to our health. As you can see, even though the sea cucumber have no bones, okay? They have no bones in their body. They lack of bones in their body, but they do benefit us with the bone health. So how they benefit us with the bone health is actually the sea cucumber, they contain a magnesium as well a calcium, which is both, both of these content is very useful uh, for the heart and the muscle function 
And next one is a very such essential function for our bone uh, building. So this chemical also, con the content of this chemical also can increase the bone mineral density, okay? And also can make the strength of the bone, strengthening the bones. And for second, immune system. So immune system is very important as sea cucumber content uh, antioxidants and tons of vitamins. So when you talk about vitamin, it's really good for the um, immune system where they also loaded with uh, glycine and also arginine. So as you can see, uh, the glycine and arginine is actually to enhance the cell immunity by promoting the activation of the white blood cell to uh, fight against the pathogen and the cancer cell. That's two. And they also have more. It's good for the oral trash. So it's good for our gum. Okay? Sea cucumber extract has a very potent antimicrobial effect where they can prevent and or they can treat the common infection by neutralizing the bacteria and fungi. So the extract from the sea cucumber, you also can found the product in, um, I think in the toothpaste, where it can help people with the gum problem. Okay, I think for this um, uh, product, you also can found in, in Malaysian market. Okay, but of course, uh, we need more research and clinical tests being done uh, towards that. And number four, for sea cucumber, they do benefit us to relieve the arthritis and uh, joint pain. So this is important as well, as sea cucumber contain the chondroitin sulfate, which is a very important uh, building block in the skeletal structure. Uh, it can be found in the tissue between the bones and the cartilage. Okay, it can be found in the tissue of bone and cartilage. So it's very help. It's very helpful uh, to relieve the uh, joint pain and arthritis. Arthritis. <laughs> it's so difficult. And then uh, number five, they have a very high protein. So when you talk about high protein, uh, sea cucumber known as uh, contain high protein up to fifty five percent. Uh, which is help to produce uh, natural energy. It also contains the mucopolysaccharides, uh, up to 16%, which is good in, for the blood uh, circulation, as, as well as a natural painkiller agent. And it also been used in cartilage bone repair. So this is the protein. And they also very good because they are have a low fat and they have they contain a very low fat for every consumption with the high protein so i could say it's perfect for anybody who's on diet and how about the heart even though sea cucumber also have no heart uh, there's a few studies show that it can reduce the blood pressure in red uh, chemical tests so there is another study conducted by uh, Biomed Research International uh, showed that it can reduce stress and uh, liver damage also in the red uh, clinical test. So we need further and more research study and clinical tests is needed because, before we can prove that it can uh, good for the heart and also for cancer. So there are several studies show that it's good for treatment uh, for the pancreatic cancer, colon cancer, liver cancer, because it got this uh, cancer fighting property. So as you can see, all of this uh, is benefit to us, is benefit to humans. So I could say that's another reason why sea cucumber is become high demand for the consumption, because it does, I mean, it's really good for our health benefit. So, my next slide actually is the most interesting, interesting topic for all the ladies here because we're going to talk about the cosmetic and the beauty. As sea cucumber nowadays become less, become popular 
and high demand in the cosmetic industry due to the extract content that is useful for the cosmetic production. And when you talk about cosmetic, there is a few things uh, need to be highlighted for a better skin result. I think this is a uh, common, I mean, it's very normal for our ladies to look for all these chemicals, all these um, benefits before choosing any cosmetic product, okay? The radiation energy that emits from the sun that reach the earth is from, is from the universe, okay? And that's the ozone in our earth atmosphere that provides some protection. But the breakdown of the ozone layer that make us more vulnerable toward the UV ray exposed. So when the UV ray reach our skin, uh, they interact with the natural chemical in our skin. It's called uh, melanin. Okay, so basically melanin is like the first line of the protection and it absorbs the UV rays to shield our skin damage. Uh, but repeatedly overexposed to the UV ray, it leads us to the more blemish in our skin, like a fine line, uh, a wrinkle, the age spot, and even sunburn. Because of the sea cucumber have a special properties uh, in their body where they contain photoprotective compounds. It's called as microsporin like amino acid. We call it as MAA. Okay, uh, MAA is a function uh, such as an um, antioxidant and is a broad spectrum of uh, more UV absorber. Okay, the function is to protect the skin against the UV radiation by absorbing high light energy. At the same time, it also dissipating the energy as a heat. Okay, and they also scavenging the reactive oxygen. So this combination of the um, uh, photoprotective compound is very useful in our tropical sunscreen because we are exposed more to the very uh, bright light intensity. But again, not all sea cucumber have this content, the MAA. Uh, there is research being done that some sea cucumber uh, diet is responsible for the MAA uh, present in their body. And how about the skin whitening? So it also a uh, big thing is uh, uh, people look, I mean, people try to look pretty, flawless, or try to look young, right? So skin whitening and anti-aging activities is very important to choosing the uh, the beauty products. So the study in um, in Japan of a uh, sea copper Japonicus is actually contain the uh, tyrosinase enzyme, which is very good used in the white skin whitening agent. But again, for this enzyme, not just can be found in the sea cucumber, it also can be found in the insects and other. Uh, plants like, like uh, seaweed also can be found in the seaweed, okay? So the tyrosinase actually is a copper containing uh, glycoprotein enzyme that catalyzes the rate limiting phase of uh, forming the melanin. So this enzyme is actually a typical method used to improve the uh, pigmentation, okay? And number three is uh, antimicrobial activities. So, because of sea cucumber contain a very potent antibacterial agent, so it's known it's good for the cosmetic product because we try to avoid any spoilage in the cosmetic product itself. And number four is good for the wound healing activities. So that's why gamat oil is very popular uh, in Malaysia, not just in Langkawi. I mean in Malaysia because it's really good for the wound healing. So that's about 70% of the total body wall of a sea cucumber is a highly insoluble collagen fiber. It's a collagen fiber. And collagen is known good to induce uh, tissue repair and the wood healing process. 
So besides that, the sea cucumber also have fatty acid for the healing process and the antimicrobial effect they actually can use to reduce the inflammation and infection of the wound. And carbohydrates and lipid also is uh, important. I mean, it's be contained in the sea cucumber, found in the sea cucumber, actually to support the growth and the blood clotting process to be fastened, the wood healing. So there's about four uh, important things that you can see the prospect in the cosmetic industry that is really good for the skin itself. But not everything is goes right because there is the side effects. Can I get the next slide? Oh, of course, that's the side effect, right? The toxic material. So if you do consumption of the sea cucumber without cleaning it properly, so I'm sure you know the effects. Because sea cucumber is a um, bottom feeder. There's a lot of human activities and industrial waste discharge and it's flow back to our sea and deposit in the sand. And the sea cucumber and the bioaccumulation happen because the sea cucumber uptake the toxin from the water and also from eating the other contaminant organism. So uh, you can imagine the, the sea cucumber feed on the very dirty sand, which is coming from the industrial waste. And we don't really clean the sea cucumber properly before we eat them. So I could say you can get the toxic matters as well from consumption of the contaminate, contaminated sea cucumber. And allergies. Um, maybe this one people not know that the sea cucumber may pose a risk to the people with the shellfish, shellfish allergy. Even though sea cucumber is not a shellfish, but it, can, it might happen. It might happen. And there is a study showed that people with the allergy of uh, shellfish, after eating a sea cucumber, they got uh, the effects. They got the rashes and they got, uh, they got problem afterwards. But so then I could say we need more research. Of course, we need more research to learn more about the safety and the efficient, efficient of the sea cucumber. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> okay, now we talk about the environment. So it's not just good for us, it's not just good for humans, it's also good for the environment. As you can see, there's numbers of um, function or roles of a sea cucumber in the ecosystem, but I'm going to talk a few about it. So first I'm going to talk about the bio, uh, the sand cleaning. Okay, next. Haris, next slide. Okay, so we talk about the sand cleaning. Uh, most of sea cucumber is a deposit feeder where they're feeding on the organic detritus that mix with the, with the sand. So they then excrete the sand, generally less organic rich than they, what they had consumed. So basically the sea cucumber, they digest uh, bacteria, uh, decaying plants, uh, diatom, fungi, and many other organic matters as a food. But they don't consume a macroalgae or the seagrass. So what we can say, for example, in the oceans, we have a lot of marine animals, fish, for example, and fish, they do eat. They also do release a dropping. They also poops. So all the poops get back to the sea floor. Okay, so sea cucumber play the most important animal in the ocean to vacuum, to clean all the sand floor from all these bacteria. Or, or from the dirt. I could say sea cucumber also as a toilet cleaner. Not just a vacuum cleaner, as a toilet cleaner as well. So you can imagine like at home, if nobody clean the floor, so everybody can get sick because it's such important. And second, we talk about uh, biotubation. So the biotubation actually is referring to the reworking or stirring or mixing a sediment layer by organism. So as you can see in the picture, most of the sea cucumber live on the sea floor. 
So they do move around. Basically, they dig, they dig under, they dig under the sand, they push the sand up to the surface. So when the sand is being pushed up to the surface, the sediment interact with the oxygen in the water column. As in the ocean, you have to remember, sea water have dissolved oxygen. So this dirty sediment basically already mixed with the oxygen. So there are more oxygen concentrations toward the sand. So that's why they call as a bioturbation. So it's actually a reworking of sediment layer. Okay, uh, next slide. And next one is a new next one is a nutrient recycling. So as you can see in the picture, I mean it's a very simple. Uh, the sea cucumber feed on, on anything on the seafloor, the bacteria, the dendritus, and other stuff, which is a nitrogen-rich compound. So they are the nitrogen-rich compound. So from that, they be digested uh, into their stomach from the organic uh, nitrogen into inorganic clumps, which is turned into ammonium and the phosphate. So you can see the ammonium and phosphate is released from the bottom to the atmosphere. And actually for this product, which is the waste product, it can increase the productivity of the primary uh, producer, like a microalgae, like, like a seagrass. And the ammonia waste as well uh, to serve or to fertilize the surrounding area by providing a nutrient. Okay, so you have to know that sea cucumber feeding on, on the sand, for example. And the sand is a carbonate based sand. It's not just a normal sand. The sand, it might have a carbonate or from a rubble, from a, from a coral. So from the dissolve, I mean, from the digestion of the sand, it also produces the soluble carbon, uh, calcium carbonate mineral that release into the water. As you know, coral reef need calcium carbonate to form or to classify uh, the skeleton. So the reef is need calcium carbonate to grow, to, to form their own uh, skeleton. And number four, is number four, yeah. Uh, it's also the influence on the local water chemistry. Okay, uh, from the feces or from the poops, the sea cucumber can increase the water alkali uh, alkalinity, means the water, sea water can become less acidic. Uh, I'm sure everybody concerned that our ocean now slowly turning acidic due, due to the global uh, climate change. So by having sea cucumber in the ocean, it showed that it can uh, remove, I mean, it can increase the alkalinity and the seawater become less acidic. Through the digestive process in the gut, it can increase the pH level of the water surround where they poop. So that's a lot of study had been done and it showed that uh, the surrounding area where a lot of sea cucumber and the dropping actually increase the alkalinity. So, and remember, they also digest the carbonate sand. They also release the calcium carbonate. So basically, they, the sea cucumber uh, influence on the local water chemistry. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, so now we talk about the fishery demand or fishery interest and demand. Um, for the do domestic demand, so as I'm currently now in Langkawi, and Langkawi is a very popular area to get the damat or compared to other part of Malaysia. And there is over 40 damat based industry uh, entrepreneurs in Langkawi with over 40 different types of damat products. So means that you not just have the gamma oil, you can get the balm, you can get the, uh, the cosmetic product and many others. It's all based on the sea cucumber. And not just for the product, it also for the consumption. 
I'm sure uh, people know that sea cucumber is uh, is very popular uh, for consumption. I could say most of the sea cucumber that be uh, exploited is from the family Holothuridae and also from family of Stichopus. So for this species, these two species actually is um, the highly demand amongst the other species where we have over uh, 80 species present in the Malaysia water. And the raw product from this species usually is processes into um, a valuable product like, like a gamut oil or the gamut water. So maybe uh, some of you have heard about the gamut oil where is a is a is a area where people dry the the sea cucumber that be dry is be boiled is be boiled with the coconut oil and then it added more ingredients like herbs into it and it boiled for hours or per, or days so it turned into a very concentrate gamut oil and that's another popular product which is called as a gamut water or like a tonic where the sea cucumber uh, is not a dry sea cucumber it does clean sea cucumber it be boiled for three days at least in the very low heat without any addition of ingredients to get the pure uh, water sea cucumber water so this is the two product or the two uh, yeah, the two products of sea cucumber that are very popular in Langkawi. Because uh, the dry sea cucumber per kilo is actually very expensive. Nowadays, uh, it's turned into 400 to 700 per kilo. So that's about the, the market now for the dosmetic product. Okay, and next one. And this is for the global demand. Uh, the, the sea cucumber is not, not just a popular food in Malaysia. It's also a global demand. That is, is a very popular. It's a very popular in the Southeast Asia. Actually, Southeast Asia, we represent the global market hotspot for the sea cucumber trading. Um, I'm sure you heard that it's because the growing of the international market for the smoked dry sea cucumber that been used for the consumption. Uh, Hong Kong, uh, Singapore, Taiwan, China uh, is one of the country with the high demand of this uh, animal. Uh, but I could say China and Japan, they have a very good farming system that they can produce a lot of sea cucumber in a year. And besides United Nations, the FAO, uh, recognized sea cucumber as one of the global food community in the fishery industry. Okay, and this is a very uh, interesting side thing. Uh, as Indonesia is one of the world producer and exporter, followed by Philippines, which is the second largest producer. And guess what? We in Malaysia, we in the compl uh, complex situation where we are a producer, exporter, uh, consumer, and we also can get variety product release from live, fresh, chill, and frozen. So you can get everything from Malaysia. And most of sea cucumber from Sabah uh, is trade for the consumption, such as the family of Holotheria scabra. Okay, and next. Oh, besides that, the um, the sea cucumber also become a global demand because um, it's been used for the pharmaceutical and now in turn into the cosmetic industry. So that's why more and more demands toward the sea cucumber now. And the major trade, as people know about it, uh, sea cucumber being overfish. It's been overfishing for years. Like in Langkawi itself, uh, we lost a lot of sea cucumber since I think 1990s that we lacking of the sea cucumber in our water. Around 10,000 tons of a dry sea cucumber is trading per year. You can imagine how many, I mean, how many numbers of sea cucumber been used. So that's about 200 million sea cucumber extract each year. 
And uh, collecting sea cucumber is very easy, where you can get them from shallow reef uh, traditionally, or uh, you can collect them during the low tide. And the fishing season for the sea cucumber is all year round, means that um, any time of the low tide or a shallow area, you can go and fishing them. So there's no special season to fishing the sea cucumber. And of course, we lack of law and regulation. Um, there, is there is no such minimum legal size for the harvesting or number of cash quota. And we are lucky in Malaysia, we do get a few islands as a marine park, where marine park, we are not allowed for fishing or collecting any uh, or aquatic organism in the area. But how about the ungazed area, including Panko and Langkawi? And also uh, some part of Sabah. This area is ungazed on the marine park, means that people can go collect uh, the animal. I mean, go fishing. Or maybe even worse is, is go overfishing of the sea cucumber. So we lack of the enforcement. And I think we should, we should do something about it as well. Uh, in terms of the law and regulation. So actually for commercialized fishing or commercialized harvesting, we need a special permit from the fishery department. But traditionally, uh, fishing, we don't need permit. Okay, next. Okay, conservation, uh, sea cucumber, there's over 1000 species of sea cucumber worldwide. And there is a few species is actually under endangered list by the fishery department of Malaysia, especially the gamut species. Gamut species basically is the family of sea cucumbers. Okay, because of the high value towards the uh, medicinal and consumption. So that's endangered. And I'm sure we're going to lose the sea cucumber in future too. Okay, next. Okay, there is a few things that we probably can do or action and we can try to conserve. Of course, we talk about again about the management or the regulation. So maybe this is the way we can do to increase the gamut population to prevent the, the extinction. Uh, and at the same time, maybe we can understand how the exploited uh, species actually is linked to the other component of the ecosystem. And it can influence the, uh, the, the whole ecosystem process. So by certain size and species of the sea cucumber be harvested, and the catch limit also need to be imposed. Okay. And second is the intensive study and research. So we need a lot of study. We need a lot of research about the sea cucumber as that claiming to be in base. Uh, or it be proved that sea cucumber have a lot of uh, nutrition value. But the old method of the processing sea cucumber that involve many cycle of boiling, uh, drying, actually it might reduce the nutrient value. So perhaps we can improve the processing method and there is a value added to the sea cucumber. Okay, next. Farming, so farming is a, is a big thing here. Unfortunately, we still lacking of the research and development in breeding the sea cucumber. Uh, so far, the area that concentrate is the state of Sabah and as well in Langkawi. For example, in Langkawi itself, in Bukit Malut, uh, the Department of Fishery conducting research on the breeding at sea cucumber. So they turning into a hatchery. Uh, for the commercialized activity, but it's still a lacking on the other part of Malaysia. And for the sea cucumber, there is a few things we can do. Uh, first, for the seedling. 
usually seedling is including the the lab work where the sea cucumber is spawning, they release the eggs and sperm, I mean the gametes, and uh, they keep in the laboratories and fertilized, and they can have a very small sea cucumber. And about the nursery. So the nursery, the breeding, uh, I mean the, the size of the breeding, I mean it's about 20 to 40 grams per individual. And for the breeding, so for the breeding, we put the sea cucumber in the, in the cage, in the cage, smaller cage, and then we put into a bigger cage. Uh, selecting seed is need, uh, I mean, it's very important because size is need to be at least 20 to 40 grams. So, and the control water quality where the area is need to be protected, uh, not too exposed to the air, especially when the water is low, when the low tide, and the area uh, should be have a water movement and unpolluted water. And the breeding period usually take at least eight months to reach the market size of about 300 grams. Okay. Next. Okay. <clears throat> now we talk about the conservation that we have done here at this resort. So, because we know in Langkawi, we don't have much uh, sea cucumber uh, farming. And the area that they do is for the commercialized farming. So in Andaman, we do few experiments. We do experiments since last year uh, toward the sea cucumber project. Actually, it's a very simple project that we did and it works. Where you can see we're using a rubber band. We're just using a rubber band we tie the body in the middle and then in next few days I, I think about three days just about three days the sea cucumber start to split and then it become two but it's not ready yet and within six weeks it start to regenerate the losing part and okay next as you can see uh, we have this project in the last World Ocean Day. In the, we launched this project on the World Ocean Day on last June 8th in 2019 that we released back about 20 uh, individual of sea cucumber back to the ocean. So the project is hoping to conserve or to preserve the species that we might lose in future. So uh, maybe you have heard that if sea cucumber be cut into half, is turned into two, right? But it's never happened. Okay, uh, Harris, can you can I show them? Can you close the slide? Okay, so as you know, sea cucumber have the front and the bottom up here. So what happens if you cut them into half? Okay, so by the way, it's not a cooking class. So this is, we cut them into half. So you can imagine what happens. I could say only the front with the mouth, it will survive because it's able to eat. But the other end, it can't survive because it have no mouth to eat, they only have a bottom. Okay, they, they have not enough food. Uh, it, I can say it's kind of starving because it doesn't have enough food uh, for six weeks before it develops a new mouth. Okay, but what happens if we're using a rubber band? Okay, that's what we use uh, in, in the hotel. So we're using the rubber band. So I can see we have a rubber band here. So we tie their body in the middle. Okay, we tie their body in the middle. So the sea cucumber itself is getting stressed. It got stressed out, and then it slowly pass the food to the other end here. Okay, when it pass the food to the other end, within the three days, it start it start to divide itself into two. So the one on the front. It have mouth, but it might have empty stomach because it's already transferred all the food to the other end. Okay, but it still can survive because it can eat. And the other end is the most critical. They have only a bottom, no mouth. 
But remember the food that we transfer in here. So I could say the food is basically enough for the sea cucumber to wait for six weeks before it develops a new mouth. So I can say both of them will survive. So it's a very simple thing that we did in here in Langkawi. And so far it is very good. <laughs> I mean, so far it's work. That's a good thing. Um, so maybe there's a lot more uh, project can be done around Malaysia. Uh, so hopefully it's work and we can protect our mother nature. We can protect our marine life here. Okay, thank you. Any question? All right, thank you very much, Hidayah. Very, very interesting talk. Uh, we have learned a lot today. Um, so uh, before uh, we go to the Q&A, uh, let us share the uh, Q&A, uh, share the, the quiz uh, link. So before I share the link, uh, what are the prizes we have, Hidayah? Oh, uh, the prizes, we having the, the mark, the mark with um, the coral conservation logo on it. We have the mark. All right, that's very interesting. Okay, let me share the link to the quiz in the chat room. All right, I've already shared the link for the quiz. Uh, there'll be five winners, am I not mistaken? Yeah, that's the one. Wow, that's very nice. That's very nice. So we have uh, five winners, right? Uh, yes, we've got five winners. Okay, all right. So uh, the quiz is already open. Now I'll pass over to Lun Ping uh, for the Q&A session. Lun Ping, over to you. Oh, by the way, Hi, the, uh, the secret cucumber that I hold is not a real secret cucumber. Okay, we know it's, 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 yeah. it's a plasticine. <laughs> it's plasticine. <laughs> okay, Hidayah, uh, there are a few questions that I have seen here. Uh, from Facebook, uh, Nuriana asking, how are they affected by the climate change? I mean the sea cucumber. Oh, for the sea cucumber. So uh, actually for the sea cucumber, uh, the climate change, when, once we talk about the climate change, uh, the seawater turns to acidic. Okay, the seawater turns to acidic. So the coral cannot form well because uh, the water is too acidic. But for the sea cucumber, they mostly feed on the dendritus of um, sediments. So anything on the seafloor. I could say the wastewater uh, that affected more towards the sea cucumber rather than the uh, global warming or the, the global issue. Okay, uh, so the next question from Liana. Uh, is there any aquatic, uh, sorry, uh, aquaculture improvement project or AIP? for sustainable and responsible harvest station? Oh, mm -hmm. as I told yeah. you earlier, from, from the fishery uh, department, uh, the R&D development in sea cucumber is very lacking and it still uh, need to be further study. And actually we are kind of way behind uh, of the other um, countries where we just start do the farming. So it, it just, we just start do the farming back in like 2016, in 2016 and only certain area, not the whole Malaysia. I think we have uh, two in Langkawi. Okay, uh, the next question is uh, uh, the nutrients that is inside the sea cucumber after it's cooked, is the nutrient lost? <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, that's true, right? <laughs> it's very true. Uh, okay. Uh, so that's why we need to do a lot of study on research about the, the cooking. The cooking. I mean, if you know about a sea cucumber, they usually sell in the dry. Okay. So I'm, we not talk about the cooking class here, right? <laughs> so uh, it's a dry sea cucumber. For the first, firstly, the sea cucumber is be collected, they cut, and they remove the gut and they clean it. 
time to time with the soap and many others, and they let it dry. So actually, by um, I could I I'm okay. Uh, heating too much or I mean too exposed toward the heat, I could say it probably can uh lo we can lose the nutrients. So that's why we need a further study how the good process to keep all the nutrients in the in the situ cucumber. Usually how you cook. <laughs> Usually my mom cooks it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's very delicious. But I'm not sure whether the way she cooks uh, still keep the nutrients inside. Okay. <laughs> Water Hopefully. boiler normally is like you know, boil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh that's all the question. Any other questions, uh, uh, or audience? That's what I I can see now. Okay. If no other questions, I pass back. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me see. Oh. <laughs> How do we determine if any gamma oil is pure or otherwise? Oh. <laughs> oh, that's difficult. Uh, that's very difficult. Okay. Um. Honestly speaking. Once you talk about the um, extinction of the sea cucumber, the gamut in the water, where we, for the, the gamut process itself, at least they need 30 kilo of dry gamut per, per month to produce the oil. So we don't have much anymore, okay, for the gamut, honestly. And even now, it's getting worse, we get the gamut, the sauce from Thailand. So we got from Thailand. So it's very challenging for the, the base, I mean the company, to produce the, the gamut oil. And there is, there is a fake, there is a fake gamut that you can get in the market. Uh, in the lower price, of course, in the lower price. Probably they still use the gamut in uh, manufacture, but they use less. So it's not really concentrate gamut abstract. Yeah, how to determine? Difficult. <laughs> Either your cut is be cure fast or if not cure at all. Yeah, so it's very difficult. Yeah, it's very difficult. Okay, I see. And maybe, maybe the smell is different or <laughs> no? It's not. Oh, okay, okay. I, I see. Okay, then uh, it sounds like the the sea cucumber in the wild is getting lesser and lesser. Is there any way the yes. public uh, can help to conserve it? I mean, the conservation work or general public? Oh, general public. So, for example, we try, I mean, we in a both situation now, we try to conserve, but at the same time, we try, I mean, we like to have the nutrients, right? Mm. So, we like to conserve, at the same time, we use the sea cucumber. It's a high demand from us itself. So, the way how we can maybe try to conserve uh maybe joining any uh project that we conduct by uh any de fishery department regarding to the uh the gamut in i mean the gamut reproduction project um uh, it's very difficult it's very difficult to i mean it's very difficult to to do the farming uh but as a general i mean as a public what we can do, perhaps we can maybe not collecting them in the wild. I'm sure when you walk into the beach, low tide, you can see the gamut. And it's very easy to collect. Just, just don't simply go and collect them because you know you can cook them, right? No, just <laughs> let it be in the, in the wild. Let them be reproduced because most of the gamut that we can have maybe is taken from the commercialized gamut or from farming not really in the wild. That's what we help for, for the, for the public, not collecting them in the wild. Okay, the next question is, uh, is the, uh, the, I mean, sea cucumber is going to be extinct? <gasps> I can say yes. <laughs> I can say yes. Um, as you can see, we, we lack of farming and still high demands. Uh, yes. It will extinct. It will extinct if nobody tries to protect or to conserve them. Okay. But hopefully not. 
Is that is yeah. it fun? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the next question is, uh, can we visit the conservation center in Langkawi? Uh, is, it, is it open to public? Uh, in, oh, um, okay. Uh, for the, for the, uh, the hotel or the, the, the fisheries? Which one? Because I think in the, for the fisheries, uh, I don't think it's open to public, but maybe you can, Email them, perhaps it's working. Yeah, because it's a hatchery, they do in a hatchery. So I don't think it's open to public. But maybe you can email them to, for the visit. Uh, while in Andaman, um, this is more toward the in-house guests, but also the same thing if you are interested uh, into this, you, I'm sure you can email the hotel and ask if they can uh, go and come in to, to look at the sea cucumber project that we have here because it's part of the education and it's good for the um, awareness. Okay, the last question. Uh, is there any difference between the farm uh, sea cucumber and the wild one on, in terms of nutrients and quality? Ooh. Oh, of course, um, it depends where you farm it. <laughs> if you're farming, the farming in the open area where we are contact with the surrounding water, and if the water is polluted, even though it's a farming, it's still considered as a polluted sea cucumber. It's the same in the wild. It depends on the area where you collect them. For example, if you collect them next to the, the factory or waste uh, from, the, from the development or from anything. So, it also can affect the sea cucumber nutrients. So I could say, <laughs> I could say they do have a nutrient, uh, but it's, it's, because sea cucumber is totally depends on the water quality. You can what they eat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. So, uh, okay. So uh, we'll, we'll go back to uh, uh, Harris now. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Lun Ping and uh, Hidaya for the Q and A. A lot of very interesting questions and uh, very more inf informative answers. All right. Now let's go to the uh, answers. Uh, let's go to the quiz results. Let's see who uh, won the prizes. Okay. Uh, the first is uh, E Sui Nio, and the next is No Al Farani. Next is Karina Katikeyan. Then we have Adrian Lee and Lu Fui Yi. So congratulations to the five of you. You have won the, the uh, gifts from uh, Andaman uh, Resort Langkawi. All right. Uh, so uh, before we end, uh, just a closure of uh, what we've got today. So. Um, a gamut has a lot of health benefits. Uh, it's got, uh, it helps with bone health. Uh, it has 55% uh, of protein. Uh, it helps uh, in, improve uh, the immune, our immune system because it has high contents of antioxidants, uh, vitamin B3. It also has cancer fighting properties. Uh, in the uh, cosmetic industry, it's got anti-aging properties, antimicrobial properties, and also uh, screen, skin whitening. Wow, it's a very good product. Uh, however, uh, it also has got side effects whereby uh, it also takes uh, uh, uptake toxin. So it has got a very high bioaccumulation. So we have to be careful when pre preparing uh, uh, sea cucumbers. Uh, also, those who have uh, allergy with uh, uh, shellfish, uh, they have to be careful. On for the environment, uh, uh, as they are bottom feeders, they do a lot of sand cleaning. They also uh, induce bioturbation, that means uh, cycling of the soil uh, at the seabed. And also they assist in uh, nutrient recycling. Uh, on the downside, because of their demand, their population is being affected. Uh, locally, they have been used for gamut oil, gamut water. Uh, internationally, they also as uh, used as uh, as a food source. Uh, they are also recognized by FAO as one of the important food source. All right. So uh, what we need to do is uh, here is uh, to have an enforcement or a regulation on on the size of the gamut that being that is being harvested and also the amount that can be harvested. All right, so these are some of the areas where we need to improve on. Uh, they also need to be uh, more research on, uh, for example, as what you said, uh, what is the best method of extracting the nutrient? Uh, 
from from the government uh, so that uh, it is much more uh, efficient and beneficial so we do not need to harvest so much from the, from what we have from the little we have we can get more all right so we also can have uh, there's also methods available for farming uh, uh, uh locally all right so i believe we have come to the end of our talk uh, thank you very much Hidayah, for the very wonderful very informative talk uh, we wish you the best of luck in your uh, in your work in your in your conservation activities all right, so to everyone else, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we look forward to see you in the next uh, next event. Uh, the next event will be held in two weeks' time. Uh, the next talk will be on uh, biology of coral and coral bleaching. Also uh, from uh, the Andaman Resort Langkawi, his colleague of uh, Hidayah. Our speaker is Izzat, so it will be held on the 26th of September. So uh, our links and, uh, uh, and advertising will be coming out soon. So uh, look forward to it and do register. All right. So with that, uh, we thank you very much and have a safe and wonderful weekend. All right. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thanks, Hidayah. Ah, by the way, Hidayah.